Good morning, Calvary Chapel Hemet family. Welcome back to another Heart to Home devotional. I'm happy to be sharing with you this morning. Let's pray and then we're gonna dive into one of my favorite texts in the New Testament. Lord, we thank you for another day that you've given to us. Thank you for your word, that it's alive and active, that every time we come to it, you have something to teach us, to share to us, to speak to our hearts. Lord, thank you for um, the work of the cross. Thank you for your word. We love you. We praise you. We're excited to dive into what you have to teach us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, this morning we're going to look, like I said, at one of my favorite texts in the New Testament. Um, it shows God's magnificence, his extravagant love for us, his plan of salvation, our role and responsibility as Christians. It's just got so much packed into t only 10 verses. So we're going to be if in Ephesians chapter 2. I'm going to go ahead and read the verses really quick. Um, if you've got your Bibles, follow along. Otherwise, sometimes what I like to do, one of my teachers in elementary school taught me this. Maybe it's a little corny. I like it. But close my eyes and try to picture the text as it's read. And that kind of brings it to life. Helps It helps me. I'm a visual uh, learner too. So it helps me to kind of take in the information to remember it, to process it more. So Ephesians 2, 1 through 10 says, And you were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that's now at work, in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of our body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you've been saved, and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you've been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it's the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one can boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So I know... It's kind of a longer chunk of scriptures than we maybe normally go through in a devotional, but there's so much packed into it, so much. And so we're going to kind of go through verse by verse. We're going to see um, all the goodness, well, part of the goodness of what God has to share share with us. Just like I, I said early, earlier um, when I was praying, God's word is alive and active. Every time we come to the text, he's got something to show us. So he showed me something this morning. I'm going to share it with you. And then when you go over it again and again, he's going to show you new insights and new mercies and new, um, new truths to your, to your heart, to your conscience, to your, to your mind every time you go through it. So verses 1 to 3, um, they highlight who we were before Christ. What does it say? We were dead in trespasses and sins that we once walked, following the world, following the prince of the power of the air, um, following the spirit of disobedience, right? Following our own passions, following our own desires, just like the world. That's who we were. Um, it calls us, we were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind, destined for hell. That's, that's rough. And then verse 4, my favorite, favorite two words in the Bible, but God. This is who we were. We were dead in sin. We were following sin, seeking after sin, actively pursuing our own desires, but God. But God being rich in mercy because of, because of what? The great love with which he loved us. Even though we were dead in trespasses and sins, even though we followed our own desires, even though we followed after sin, um, because of his great love, because of his mercy, what did he do in verses? Uh, in the next verse to say, uh, he made, raised us up with him. He made us alive together with Christ, raised us up with him because of his kindness. Um, so, he takes us from dead in sin to alive with Christ. Such an amazing transformation. Um, only, through, only through grace. And then verse 7 kind of tells us why. 
It says, so that in the coming ages, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Jesus Christ. So why did all of this happen? To show God's grace and kindness for all the ages to come. Uh, he brings us into a right relationship with him. Um, we read that we're a new creation. When we're born again, we're a new creation. We go from death to life. We sing about it in worship songs all the time, right? He's taken us from dead in sin to alive with Christ, in Christ. Um, and that is so, so, so super sweet. Verses 8 and 9, a lot of us, um, if you grew up in the church, learned this in Awana. Uh, it's one of the, the key verses for, for the, I think, third through fifth graders, third through sixth graders. Um, and says, for by grace you've been saved through faith. It's not our own doing, it's the gift of God, not a result of works. So no one can boast. Um, these verses really keep us humble. Um, this, this whole section of scripture highlights who, you, who we were, dead in sin, and God transformed us. God saved us because of his kindness, because of his mercy, through um, grace, uh, by faith. And um, verses 8 and 9 really keep, it really kind of knocks any pride out of our, out of our sails to keep us humble. Who saved us? God did. Um, we were dead in sin, but God gifts us with salvation, um, with grace through faith. God gives us faith in him. And then verse 10 gives us a charge. So what now? We were dead in sin. Now we're alive with Christ. Um, we're saved through faith by God's grace. And now what? Um, and verse 10 tells us what to do. We're his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God created or which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So we were created for good works. We weren't created to stay dead in sin. We were created for new life in Christ, for good works that God created or that God uh, prepared beforehand. Um, he created us for a purpose. We need to honor him by being obedient to his calling to serve others. God doesn't tell us to do things that we can't do, right? The Holy Spirit empowers us to do what he's called us to do. God is just, God is fair. He wouldn't tell us do these good works if we couldn't do them. So if you're feeling down on yourself, having a rough day, a lot of us are having a lot of rough days lately. Um, remember who, who am I? Think about that. Read through these verses. I was dead in sin. I was following after my own passions. But God made me alive in Christ. That's who you are. You were made for a purpose. You were made for, uh, for good works, to do good works for the Lord. God charges you to do it because you can. He's, he gives you the power. He gives you the desire. He gives you the ability to do it. Use your abilities for his glory. Um, that's who you are. So when you're questioning, God, what am I here for? What am I doing? Why is this happening? Remember, you're not who you were. You're who you are. Who, read verses 4 to 6, 4, to, 4 through 10. This is who you are. This is your identity is in Christ. You're alive in Christ. So I hope this was an encouragement for you. It was a great encouragement for me. They're my favorite, favorite verses um, to see God's marvelous love for us, his magnificent love for us, and that he empowers us to do his will, to do good works for him, for his glory. So let's pray. And um, thank you guys for sharing, with, sharing in this with me. Um, I'm so happy to be able to share the word um, in this way. Such a neat, special thing to do. Let's pray. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you for your salvation, for salvation in you, for the sacrifice of the cross. Thank you that you make us alive. You take us from death to life. And you have life for us, life abundantly, uh, full of richness, full of grace and mercy. Thank you that you have a purpose and a calling for each one of us. You've given each one of us different abilities, different talents, different interests. Show us how we can use those to honor you and to serve you, to love you and to love others, to build our church, to reach out to our communities, Lord. We thank you for your word that you always have something to share with us. Thank you. 
Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen.